Hello and welcome to the Foundry's Furnace Core Tutorials for Final Cut Pro. The Regrain plugin is used to add grain to a sequence. It can either replicate grain from a grain input or apply stock grain. It has been designed to sample an area of grain from one image and then generate unlimited amounts of this grain with exactly the same statistics as the original. This new grain can then be applied to another image. So in effect we are literally copying and replicating grain. Now before you start the tutorial, you should have downloaded the relevant image sequences and scripts from the Foundry website. Once you have done this, we can begin. When you open the actual regrain script, you should find comp no grain version 2 in there. Now in this clip, we've actually had the same original sequence we used in the denoise, and we've denoised the image, and we successfully used key light to comp in the background. So what we need to do now is reapply the grain from the original image and the shot is complete. Let's go back to frame 1. What we need to do is drag this to the timeline. And what we need to do is go into our effects tab and in our furnace core tool set plugins we need to grab on the regrain and drag and drop this. And it's as simple as that. Just double click on the image, back to our bin. And what we need to do is go on to our filters tab. Now, by default, the actual plugin has given us a stock grain for a Fuji 250 under 2K. Now, because we have the original sequence, what we can do is sample from our original grain clip. So, what we need to do is go to our bin and click on our original sequence, which was original plate before we denoised it. What we need to do is drag and drop this into our sample well. Just pick it up and drop it in. Now what we need to do is actually change the stock type and actually tell the plugin that we have our own sample grain. So we click this and instantly what we'll do is try and sample our original grain and replicate it and copy and apply it to our new sequence. Now as you can see it's done a strange effect here where it's got a lot of grain and a lot of edge blurring and there's a lot of waving going on which is not the type of result that we want. So what we need to do is go back to our grain plate and we can view our grain and see exactly what we're sampling. And what we need to do now is change our grain sample area. So we just click on the view clip option so you can see our original clip where we actually gain the sample from. And we can see that the analysis center is picked on the face. Now from our denoise tool we can see that sampling from an actual image is incorrect and will cause the ringing effect which we just said. So we need to resample this to a flat area of the image. So I've got a sample area there which is great. What we need to do is turn this view clip off and we can see exactly the type of grain that we're sampling. So we can go back and view the result. As you can see we've done a default settings and just applied them and sampled from our original grain clip and we've got an okay result here. So what we need to do now is actually get a render of this and view the results. So we've played through our render now. We can see we've actually done quite a good job at replicating the grain. However, if we compare this with the original sequence, we can see it's still not perfect. So what we need to do to fix this is go back into Final Cut. So now we're back in Final Cut. So we've set up the basics, and we know we're sampling from our grain plate, and we chose another sample area. What we need to do now is actually adjust the grain. Now we have the two main controls in here, which are grain scale and grain gain. Since grain and noise are changed in luminance values, these parameters allow you to vary the size and brightness of the grain that is put back into the, each of the color channels. Now the grain scale adjusts the size of the grain granules and the actual grain gain adjusts the brightness of the grain. So the correct values for these two parameters are 1.17. So we need to adjust the actual scale and we need to adjust the actual gain with the same value. Now these results have been actually accurated by actually trial and error and going through the sequence and trying to match them individually. Normally for your particular sequences you actually go in and try and match them as closely as possible through trial and error. Now from our denoise tutorial 
we actually know that the red channel for this particular shot contain most of the grey. So what we can do now is actually go into the fine tuning parameters and add the actual gain and scale back into each of the individual color channels. Now for the red gain what we need to do is increase this to 1.12 and we need to change the actual scale as well back to 1.12 now these values have actually been you know, once again by actually going through the sequence and seeing which of these settings actually work for the accurate gain amount and um, for your particular settings these will vary so now we've added a bit more of the game back into the red channel what we need to do is go back into the views and change this back into RGB so we need to close off fine tuning down so now we've adjusted our actual sample area, we've adjusted the actual size of the scale and the gain, and we've adjusted the individual color channels and the amount of gain scale existing in each one. What we need to do is get a render of this and view the results. If you play through the sequence now, we can see we have vastly improved the results now, and we've actually added in an accurate grain sample, and we've added an actual grain and the actual scale amount as well. Now this is just an overview of the actual regrain node and for more information on the parameters not covered in this tutorial please refer back to the furnace core manual